Hello, today I'm going to be doing a demonstration of the self-actuating programmable switch. So what is a self-actuating programmable switch? Well, it's a switch meant for smart homes, so that's homes with smart sockets and uh, smart light bulbs that acts just like a normal light switch. So if I flip this switch off here, the lamp goes off, and if I flip this switch on here, the lamp goes on. Now, this really isn't anything new and has been done by other companies before. But the main difference with this switch is that if I turn this device off now via my uh, mobile phone here using the uh, web interface, the switch will flip itself into the off position and if I turn it on, the switch flips itself into the on position. So that's the self-actuating part of it. Now the other part, the programmable part, means that for each of these switches, there's two switches here, you can tie them to more than one device. So I've only got this one tied to one device at the moment, but this switch on the left hand side is tied to two devices. So if I turn this off here, that device goes off. But if I turn this on here, you can see both of the lamps are now illuminated. So let's go into some more detail now and see what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, so let's go through this demonstration setup here. So on the left hand side here, we've got my living room lamp. Um, on the right hand side, we've got a lamp which represents the pool table. So I've yanked the switch out of the pool table overhead lights and uh, hooked it up to this lamp. Down here, we've got a previous version of the switch. So uh, this version actually controls all the lights in the house. Uh, so you can see the red and green indicators there, which uh, indicate whether the device is on or off. So let's uh, just hit that there, see pull table on, pull table off, just like that. You just touch the metal contact. In the middle, we've got the uh, self-actuating programmable switch, as you saw at the start. And on the right hand side here, we've got a mobile web interface. So that's how you configure uh, this switch and actually how you can turn the lights on and off using your mobile phone as well. Right, so let's just start with a, a quick demo again. So you can see here on the left hand side, I have living room lamp and pool table currently configured to the left hand side switch. So if I touch that, What's happened there is not only has the living room lamp and the pool table turned on, but the right hand side switch has also switched to the on state. And that's because the living room lamp only is tied to that right hand side switch. So let's turn the right hand side off. Now what's happened here is that since not all the devices are off, the left hand side switch won't flip Let's just turn the left hand side switch off now and all, all the lights go out. Okay, so let's reprogram this uh, to do the inverse. So let's uh, move the pool table to the right hand side, take it off the left hand side and hit save. Okay, so now if I flip the right hand side switch, both lamps will come on and that left switch will flip again because the living room lamp was tied to it. So let's have a look now at the mobile web interface side of the switching piece. So you can see here, I've got a list of all my devices with on and off toggles. So if I go to living room lamp here and turn this off, you can see that switch is actuated off. And if I turn it on, switch is actuated on. If I turn both devices off, so living room lamp and pool table, you can see the other lamp, the other switch goes off and I can turn it on here you can see it's reflected in real time on the mobile app as well. What you can also do is control these switches via Alexa. So let's give that a go now. So let's turn that living room lamp off. So Alexa, turn off living room lamp. Okay. You can see that's reflected in real time on the uh, mobile app and also physically on the switch. Now uh, let's turn the uh, pool table off. So Alexa, turn off pool table. Okay. And there we go. So that's turned off as well. The next section of this video is gonna give you a presentation on the network topology of how this is all tied together, along with a glimpse inside each of these two boxes so you can actually see what's physically going on inside.
Okay, so let's have a look at the network topology for the uh, self-actuated programmable switches and indeed the other switch you saw there. Um, so let's start on the right-hand side. So we have uh, Orvibo S10 and S20 smart sockets. These are sockets that I use throughout the house. Uh, they're cheap Wi-Fi switches. They're about 10 to 20 pounds on Amazon and they're pretty reliable, so I'll, I'll, stick, I'll stick to using them in the future. These communicate via UDP to a Node.js server that uh, runs on a Linux box that is running 24-7 within the house. This Node.js server basically acts as a broker between those UDP messages and four different protocols that are used for various clients that connect to those sockets. Starting at the top, we have the MQTT client and server. This MQTT client is responsible for connecting to the white boxes themselves, so it's a very lightweight protocol. And inside the boxes are some ESP8266 Wemos D1 minis uh, that are running Arduino toolkits. And I used to run uh, HTTP uh, on these uh, Wemos D1 minis instead, but it was pretty unreliable. And I find that MQTT is a lot more reliable in terms of connection between uh, these Wemos D1 Mini stroke ESP8266s and the uh, Node.js server. The reliability is really increased um, as a consequence of me moving over to MQTT. Moving down from there, uh, the Node.js server also provides a WebSocket server. Um, this WebSocket server is used to uh, power the mobile client so uh, so you can see in real time earlier that the switch is turned on and off on the uh, mobile client in real time and WebSockets enable you to do that because it's a real time protocol. Let's move down from here and the Amazon Echo is a bit of a weird one actually um, so I could have used the uh, skills Amazon skills to uh, actuate the uh, lights but the problem is that you have to have a keyword. So instead of just saying turn off living room light, I'd have to say ask server or ask auto switch to turn off living room light, which is a bit cumbersome. Thankfully, somebody created a, a emulation layer called FOMO, which basically allows a server to emulate a, a Wemo light uh, Wemo lights are natively supported by the Amazon Echo. So, um, thankfully, due to this emulation, I can just say turn on living room lamp, turn off living room lamp, and the FOMO emulation layer then actually posts through HTTP to an HTTP server within the Node.js server, which then turns on and off the lights. So, that's a bit more complicated the way it works for Amazon Echo, but as I said, I didn't want to use skills there because it means that the uh, utterances are a lot more lengthy. Finally, at the bottom there, we have HTTP client. Uh, so um, this was used with ESP8266 originally, but then I decided to move to MQTT. So the H HTTP server is just there to provide functionality for other clients. Uh, for example, I've got a Pebble Watch client. HTTP is a light universal protocol and I'll keep that going because um, it just makes sense. Okay, so for the next section, I'm gonna be showing you inside the boxes. So inside the uh, self-switching box and also inside the box with the uh, red and green lights as well. So let's just go and have a look now. Okay, so let's take a look inside the self-actuating switch to start with. So I've taken the uh, switch covers off here. And what can you see? Well, you can see four holes. And within those four holes, you can see four little levers, which push the switch on and off. And those levers, just bear with me a sec here, are attached to four servos. So one, two, three, four servos. Now, those servos are controlled by... Uh, PCA 9, what is it, 9685 uh, servo controller unit, it's I2C control, 
it actually has 16 channels I'm only using four of them so it's a bit of a waste on the other side there we can see the uh, Wemos D1 Mini and that's got the Wi-Fi and that basically acts as a controller for the unit so there we go I thought I'd show you the uh, other switch as well the one with the LEDs so you can see the touch sensors there attached and this breadboard has the LEDs on it and the other row there down there is the Wemos D1 Mini again um, that controls the whole lot over here is a custom solder board and that has an MCP 23017 chip on it so that's a 16 bit well 16 channel I to see D multiplexer and finally over here you can see spark fun this is just bring this around here so that's a spark fun uh, touch can touch sensor breakout and MPR 121 and all of these chips have a uh, libraries ITC libraries for the D1 mini Arduino toolkit so pretty easy to program so all the code for both of these devices and for the server are available on github um, if you look at the link at the bottom of or link or links at the bottom of the YouTube page and also if you go to my website there's a bit more detail on how this stuff's put together. Okay, bye.